Well, good morning. You join me on this glorious early June summer's day. It's uh, barely a cloud in the sky, a lovely blue sky. Birds are singing. Views are stunning, <coughs> as you'd expect, up in this glorious part of the world. And uh, today I'm on my way to an Audax. Um, it's a 600k tour of the borders and uh, where else? Galloway or something? Anyway, I'm not actually going to be riding it. I was originally going to ride it and I decided against it because it's a bit hilly and uh, I thought I might struggle with it so instead I'm going to help at the control of Johnston Bridge so if you're riding it I hope you have a great ride and I hope it's successful and uh, if it's a PBP qualifier or an SR qualification for you and I hope really hope that you have a great ride and you achieve the results you're after. So, I have, uh, I've got a sort of a, a registered place now and I've paid for my <coughs> PBP event, but I still have a 600K left to go. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to achieve that in the flatland. So if you look that way you can see the Derwin Valley and uh, if you look that way you can see the Tyne Valley which goes all the way up there to Hexham and that's where I'm heading and then on to Gretna Green via the uh, military road and then on to the old A7 and up to Johnston Bridge. I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been watching my my videos. Uh, thanks for the positive messages. I hope you've enjoyed them. And I hope to continue to keep making more like them. saw the first uh, swallow this morning flying around my garden and uh, it did a few loops and then it finally settled on a telegraph wire and I thought oh I wonder if it's going to make a nest in uh, in one of my sheds to be really nice anyway swallows first sign of a uh, of a summer I guess Just coming up to Headley on the Hill, you get some fantastic views from Headley on the Hill. Northumberland now. So 
So if you ever come to Headley on the Hill, it's a fantastic pub and it's called The Feathers. And here it is. Great food. Lots of real ales. And uh, how's that for a view? It's pretty cool, isn't it? What in? Yeah, it's popular with cyclists, and uh, understandably because uh, this is like. Uh, Cycling heaven up here. Let me take you down West uh, Hill, which um, I think it was host to the National Hill Climbing Championships a few years ago. <coughs> I will be going down it tomorrow, but uh, today I get the great pleasure of uh, taking you down it. wild campers now it used to be what a view for them to wake up to in the morning Straight ahead. Twists and turns on this hill.
descents into the Tyne Valley, but that has to be one of the best. into Corbridge, or as the Romans called it, Corstopitum. The building coming up on the uh, left hand side is a peel tower. Which was a fortified building when uh, there were constant battles between England and Scotland. And that's another Peel Tower straight ahead. Beautiful place, isn't it? Plenty of nice cafes, but we're not going to stop this morning. Twenty kilometres into the ride, it's 130 kilometres in length. Next stop is Hexham. This is called Stoppetum. Uh, the uh, <coughs> Roman fort which existed here at the other side of a bridge across the River Tyne. What do you think of that for a house? Not bad is it? I have to confess, I don't actually know what it's called. I'll have to look it up and put it on the screen. Yep, happy with that? Good, well let's get on to Hexham then. Must be coming up to Appleby Fair. All the travellers gathering with the horses, ready to uh, show them off at the fair. That's great. Lovely to see horses. Where I live, there's horses all over the place. You can hardly walk up the footpaths. 
for horses want to say hello to you. And that plume is from uh, Hexham Sawmill. So uh, they have a big processing plant where they make all sorts of wood things. And um, you can see that plume, which I think is maybe steam, from all over the place. So you always know that you're getting close to Hexham when you can see that plume. We're not actually going to go into Hexham today, we're just going to go along the river. Uh, we're going to bypass the town. So this next bit is not very interesting, it's an industrial estate. Lots of Bodhi stuff going on here today. Looks like it could be a regatta or something. like Henley but uh, in the north. That's a lot of boats. And there's even more of them under the trees. Good chatting, hi, have a great day. So the last time I did this uh, particular road was when I was doing my 900k DIY Ordax from Land's End to Gated and um, I was coming down and it was all downhill and it was all very straight and it was all incredibly dark because we are in a part of Northumberland where they try to make sure the skies are as dark as possible so that people can observe the stars and it was absolutely inky black all the way until I got to close to Hexham which is something you don't experience very much 
in the UK these days, at least sort of further south. Um, there's normally always some light in the sky, some phosphorus, phosphorescence from the, uh, the conurbations, the cities and so on. Anyway, I've got, I think I've clambered over the steepest part and now uh, seem to be cresting the hill here. Got a surprise for you around the corner. Well, not a bad view. Yeah, so there's Vindolanda, and uh, not only do I bring you one Roman fort, but here's a second one. This one is a big one, and uh, <coughs> they've recreated part of it uh, to um, represent what it would have looked like in Roman times. Um, lovely design to come in down here, but uh, I have a nasty feeling that I know what's coming next. Well, it's been uh, pretty quiet so far, you know, in terms of roads and so on. Um, done about 50 kilometres now, and uh, unfortunately that quietness can't last forever, so I'm going to have to go onto a main road, the military road, which runs parallel to the uh, course of the, uh, the Roman wall, Hadrian's Wall, and uh, Here's the Inter National Park Welcome Centre here. This one's for Andy C down in Bath. What do you think, Andy? Nice straight road. Hmm, wonder if it's a Roman one. I think it might be. Yeah, I think it is. Wow. I mean, what can I say? It's beautiful.
what do we have here Andy? It says here Hadrian's Wall Roman Army Museum Wall Town Crags Wall Town Country Park 14% when I was doing my uh, 900k DIY Audax heading in the other direction um, I've got a confession to make I walked up this hill Situation alert, or update rather. Um, stopped at uh, <coughs> Greenhead and uh, snuffled some chocolate cake and a coffee, and uh, I'm just crawling out of Gillsland now in Cumbria. It's very hot, sunny, uh, perfect uh, day to be out on the bike to be honest. Um, just over 61 kilometers. I've got, uh, oh. 70 kilometers to go <coughs> and uh, it's coming on for uh, 35 past 12 so I've been going for three hours 25 minutes average speed at the moment moving speed 18.6 <coughs> So yeah, going well, enjoying the ride and uh, heading towards the Scottish border, very gradually. Just uh, get a load of those views, eh? Again, this is all part of my uh, 900k uh, DIY. I think it also features an Andy Burns uh, coast to coast to coast. So popular route cyclist is actually part of the uh, National Cycle Network. I think I've just been basically following route number 72 most of the time here. So yeah, lovely route. Back on the quiet roads, can't complain about that. And uh, the views, magnificent. Yep, enjoying this. Looking forward to welcoming all those guys doing the 600k this evening. Uh, apparently, some of them might visit the control twice. So, uh, that's that's a treat. That's all. That's a, as, as PBP as you can get. That. Don't you think, squirrel? Yeah, I think so as well. Anyway, keep you posted later. Yeah, there. Let me 
a good day. Okay, check out the foliage. Very nice. It's that time of year where all the lovely flowers start springing up everywhere. <coughs> oh, this is a gorgeous route. Uh, the sign tells me I'm on the Reavers cycle route now. The dirty Reavers. I don't think there's going to be any dirt, gravel, rain or nastiness on this stretch. Or even any Reavers for that matter, but uh, beautiful. Birds are going bananas. And you know, one of the things I like most about sunny days, shiny mud gods, makes me so happy. Do you want to see the real mud god as well? It's all shiny! Happy shiny people! Yeah! Sometimes it just feels like you have the whole road to yourself. because this is great look at it just rolling on towards the border not a care in the world as free as a bird Scotland coming into Gretna Green absolutely flew up the road from Longtown completely bypassed um, Brampton this time just lovely smooth road and uh, sadly the Garmin Mount upon first contact with uh, roads close to the border has just completely come loose so I'm going to have to uh, pull over and try and tighten that Stopped off at the uh, post office and had uh, a can of coke and an ice cream. It's absolutely boiling weather. Um, just shy of a hundred kilometres, uh, so not more than 30 to go. And I've just joined the notorious A7076, which uh, is, the, I think, the old A7. It's um, it's, it's got a bad road surface, it's got a bad reputation 
uh, but it's often used for Lands End John and Groats. Um, it's, it's the bit they always say there's no other way around, you have to go up this way. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, it's, it's not a bad road in the sense that it's heading in the right direction. It heads north and, um, <clears throat> and it's straight. But you do have to watch out for the potholes. Anyway, this is it now. Uh, a few towns on the way and then we get to Johnston Bridge. Yeah, there are worse roads to um, to pedal on, to be honest. <coughs> I mean, this is... It runs parallel to a motorway. The uh, M74. And so, in the same way that the A40 runs next to the M40, you know, I guess unless there's actually a incident on the motorway then everyone sort of leaves this road alone and it's, it's, it's pretty quiet it's a bit like a b road or even even a c road i mean it's just straight as a die nice and wide you know not a lot happening got to be said but you know if you just want to get the miles tucked away and oh yes the other thing about it it's pretty damn flat I mean I've done pretty much all the climbing now for this ride obviously not all of it look at the pretty flowers most understated motorway junctions in the world that and where exactly does it even lead to nowhere to like little dirt track farm Okay, situation report. Um, just past 100 and, uh, oh, 103 kilometers. Um, amazed my average uh, moving speed has accidentally moved over the 20 kilometers an hour mark. But it is actually at 20 kilometers an hour, which is um, rather a surprise. I had no intention of making that happen. Way faster than normal. But uh, I guess it's because it's such a nice dry sunny day and you know the heart is feeling light and all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, it's half past two. Set off at nine. So that's five and a half hours. So I've uh, I can't work that out. Maybe it's 18 kilometers an hour when you average it all the time up, but I need to stop for half an hour. Jump up, please, bud. Um, and uh, yeah, just enjoying the, uh, the view of the M74. I mean, there can be few roads that you can cycle on where you can where you can see such a lovely view of the motorway you know I think it's a big southern point so uh 
come to Scotland, come and see the motorway on your bike. And the uh, road hasn't been too bad so far, but I know it's going to deteriorate, so just watch now for those potholes. That's it. So I'll give you an update later. Eckle Fecken. I kid you not. Oh. Must be a Saturday, must be wedding day. Someone's getting married in a classic car. Well, that was uh, perfect timing. Now here's something very interesting for you motorway nerds. One half the motorway going north is lower and at a different level to the one going south. It's got grass in between. Okay, as you can see, I'm just skirting around the edge of Lockerbie, just passing the 120k mark and 12 kilometers to go. Maybe not the most scenic way to, uh, to go around Lockerbie, but it's... Um, it's me fine. I mean, obviously if it was cold, wet, miserable, I might pop in for a bag of chips or something, but on a day like today, just want to feel that cool breeze, that rustle in the trees. Strategic lumber route. I might say some lumberjacks. Oh, that's all you get. Secret to riding on the A7076 cycleway is to try and get on the white line, which is uh, generally the smoothest bit of uh, 
the cycle path. Not guaranteed, of course. And try and just stay on it. Just stay on the white line. Don't move from it. Even if you your body's screaming to get off the white line and your mind is going mad just stay on that white line because once you move either side of it you're into very uncertain territory And also, it stops you from wandering off, keeps you concentrated. It's like being on a pair of rollers, so like being on rollers, you know, where you just got to stay upright. It's like that, but it's on a white line. Anyway getting very close to Johnston Bridge now it's been a super ride I'll uh, update you once I get there now don't forget what I said to stay on the white line well it's uh, just after four o'clock and uh, like all good Cordax rides I've ended up in the petrol station actually in the services at uh, Johnson Bridge really nice services they've even got an M&S and I'm turning into a prawn salad and then I've got some raspberries afterwards um, there's a treat and then I'm gonna find somewhere um, quiet um, by the um, community center and have a little nap before the night shift so uh, thanks for coming along for this journey and uh, I'll uh, give you some updates from the overnight bit. Okay, bye. Well, here I am back at uh, Johnson Bridge Community Centre. Feeling a million times better than I did last time I was here on the 400k. Um, been a lovely ride. Looking forward to tonight. I'm going to get some kip. I've just spotted a, a playground. I think I'll be able to have a little kip in one of the. Uh... Yeah, I'll find something over there to, to, to have a little kip and then um, I'll be ready for this evening. Bye. Okay, so this is the calm before the storm. That's the stage that I slept on on the 400. With all the stuff here, coffee, bread, beans, garlic bread, coke, cleaning stuff, toilet rolls. These are the bags, they start at A here and then they go all the way down the corner. It's a bit like, um, it's a bit like Magpie, if you ever saw the programme Magpie when you were a kid. And they go all the way down here, down here, down here, and then there's young down there. So that's the dormitory and then all along here we've got the bags and the kitchen and it's pretty quiet at the moment one mac and cheese please it is uh, I think it's something like uh, 10 past one in the morning we've had about Nearly half of the people have come through now, so we're just waiting for the others. Um, we're expecting some of the people who came earlier to come back again to have their breakfast. So we're going to get a flurry of riders in about an hour's time, I reckon, who are coming for their second dose. And uh, yeah, so all, all quiet at the moment. A few riders have just arrived. Very exciting. So we'll be. Uh, Maybe they'll have a sleep here. 
Okay, day two, 20 to seven in the morning, just leaving Johnston Stone Bridge and uh, after helping out on the uh, 600k tour of uh, the borders and uh, gosh where was it Galloway I think and I'm heading back down south again now heading back down uh, through Lockerbie and back to Gretna Green so there's a fair chance that I'll see some of the guys on the right they're going to be the, the next control after Johnson Bridge was uh, Gretna Green and then they've got to come all the way back up to 7076 again to uh, look forward to getting to Moffat and then over Beef Tubs to Peebles and then Eskdale Muir and back to uh, to Carlisle it's a bit chilly uh, didn't really probably bring enough stuff to keep warm for this time of the morning but the sun is out and uh, yeah I reckon another hour or so and it should be nice and toasty again so it's going to be another hot and sunny day coming back I think so looking forward to the ride back and uh, I'll keep you posted if there's anything interesting on the route okay that's it for now Let's look. Have a good ride. Best of luck. Have a good one. Okay, so here's the situation. I've just passed the halfway mark and I'm feeling absolutely exhausted. I only got about, I don't know, maybe one or two hours sleep last night, so obviously that hasn't helped. Um, and I'm struggling up the hill, so I think what I'll do is see if I can just get a little nap on this grassy bank and uh, then start again, get some coffee, green head. I think that should set me up for uh, getting along the uh, military road and then just to drop down in Texas from there and along the Tyne Valley. So, yeah, gorgeous day, no rush. Um, best get a little nap and then we'll see how we feel after that. Well, so I've found, found myself some gravel running parallel to the military road so I thought I'd give it a go because it's been a while since I've had a bit of gravel and this is quite a rough gravel as well oh yes very rough This is probably Roman gravel.
finally are downhill we can uh, put the opening, the closing soundtrack to 